Hi, Bernard. Hi, Carsten. So what are we up to in this episode? You know, after a very long first introduction video, um, this one will also be uh, a bit theoretically, but it's very important. We're talking about networking in a stretched Azure Stack HCI cluster. And uh, please watch the video um, because we <laughs> I think explain it's one, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> because it's we explain of a lot of important. difficult things. <laughs> it's yes. most important. Yeah. It's so one let's of the see. most important things. Yes. So if you could switch to my screen and um, I'll take over the first slide. Yes. So, uh, you know, we do have um, in a H Azure Stack HCI environment quite some networks to care about, right? So we have the management network for the uh, uh, for the cluster to domain control local communication, the virtual machine network, the compute uh, network, how it is called um, on our websites, and then the um, uh, the storage networks. Um, and then also some additional networks, especially dedicated to, or uh, that are special to a stretch cluster environment. And that's, you know, sort of what we are covering in that video. So, but, you know, let's start with the network definition. Um, and I, you know, where does that come from? Um, so let me just point it out. Um, there is a link to this and I will post this link in the video series. Um, this is basically the starting point for the host networking, right? So you see here the traffic classes, uh, which I was talking about, the management one, the virtual machine traffic and the storage traffic. Um, and it explains, you know, a little bit about that. And you may, you know, want to read that through. Um, so let's maybe go th um, through them shortly. And I think you are going to cover or talk a little bit about these different traffic classes, right? I do. So I switch to my screen mm -hmm. and now we talk first about the management network. Um, what's the purpose of the management network? Um, it's an external facing network, so we can access over it the core infrastructure. For example, as of September 2023, an Azure Stack HCI cluster requires a local Active Directory, so it has to be part of an Active Directory. We also have maybe DNS servers, yeah? management. If you want to uh, to um, do something on the cluster with Failover Cluster Manager, with Windows Admin Center, with Virtual Machine Manager, with PowerShell, you use this network because usually the software is not running on the host itself. It is a core edition. It can't run, for example, MMC plugins. Remoting, maybe you want to go to the host. Monitoring, Azure monitoring, for example, is a great solution to monitor um, Azure Stack HCI. We need a witness, especially in a stretch cluster. We talked about that last in the last video. Witness is essential. So this is the network the over which the witness is reached. In most examples, also backup and updates and so on. We use this hmm. network. Also important, access to Azure because our Azure Stack HCI cluster has to be connected to Azure for at least billing purposes. We can do more from Azure, Arc and monitoring and everything else, all the good stuff, but at least we need it for billing. So this network has to be also external connected. We have to reach Azure. Mm -hmm. This is a stretch cluster, so we need two subnets uh, for our in our two sides. So we have hosts in one side and we have hosts in the other side. And uh, we have to have a management network, uh, a subnet in side A and a subnet in side B. And that's in the documentation you, mm -hmm. you showed us briefly and we will talk more about it. So that's mm -hmm. a requirement that we have two management subnets and, and do routing between them. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence of that, our cluster has two cluster IPs, one in uh, in the site one and one in site two. And we will see that later in our video when we uh, play about, play a little bit with our cluster, right? Mm -hmm. So and then this is, has yeah. the, it is the owner of the cluster rule, right? Um, uh, the either one or the other IP address is active. Yeah, it, or one is only used, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, where the core cluster resource is, is um, presented in which side we have only one of those and yeah you're right so this is 
the management constraint, how we call it when, when we would use a, a network ATC. So mm -hmm. the next logical network is the network we use for our virtual machines. And I call it VM network. You can also uh, call it the compute constraint. Yeah? And what's the, what network, is the yeah. purpose of this network? Um, yeah, our VMs um, have to connect between each other or even externally. So with the Active Directory, with uh, uh, Exchange, whatever. So uh, your VMs have to communicate. Um, mm. And this is a network for that. So Quite and, simple, well, like in every other yeah. cluster where you have where you host virtual machines, yeah. you have to have so, a compute network. So regarding the link speeds, right? So uh, I mean, we often see gigabit or one gigabit adapters or being used for the management. I mean, if you're not doing backup with it, right? I mean, for most of the stuff, one gigabit is enough probably, mm -hmm. right? For the management, um, not for backup, but you know, you might have a bigger bandwidth there. But for the VM one, um, you see usually, what, what link speeds do you see user, usually for the compute network? Yeah, there are some customers who do one gigabit, but I mm. would go 10 or 25 uh, yeah. in, in a new implementation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, we will do 25 gigabit. Not okay. that we need that, but we will do it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <Yeah. Okay. laughs> Next network. So the network the next, the next network would be the storage constraints. I call it SMB network because mm -hmm. it uses uh, SMB3 as a protocol. And the purpose mm -hmm. is um, in our stretch cluster, we, we have two sites and we have a storage pool in each of those sites and all the disk of the computers in one side are in the storage pool. But mm -hmm. still, we have at least two nodes, maybe three or four in each side. Mm -hmm. And if we have our storage spread over the different nodes in the site. So we mm -hmm. want to use a very high performant storage network for that. And that would our would be our storage constraint or SMB network. Um, mm -hmm. If we do a live migration in a site, so we move one VM to another host in the same site, it would be nice to do, to use this network mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. very powerful and usually it has RDMA, at least in mm -hmm. my implementation. So we want to use that network. And if we have cluster communications and also the heartbeat in the mm -hmm. same site, it would also leverage this network. So this network is a multi-purpose network, of course, for our storage traffic, but also I use it for live migration and cluster communication at heartbeat. Okay. We have two cards in our scenario. So we have two subnets for the mm -hmm. two uh, SMB networks, and uh, these are without routing. So uh, we can only reach over this network host in the same site. And of course, we want to leverage RDMA support. And mm -hmm. this is nearly the only network where we can use RDMA support. So uh, let's maybe look at the next one, right? The next one is new. So far, the networks are not new to people who build a cluster, especially an HCI cluster. These are the usual networks. But now uh, comes a new one, a special one that is only present, present in a stretched uh, Azure Stack HCI cluster. And it's called the replica networks. And mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of the replica network? So um, if we have a volume or a cluster shared volume that is replicated to the other side, not all volumes have to be, but some, of course, will mm -hmm. because you have a stretch cluster and you want to use uh, storage replication. This is a network we use for that. Yeah, it's an mm -hmm. inter-site storage replica. So the traffic from site one to site two is should be done over these networks. We need mm -hmm. subnets. Um, I usually have two replica networks per site, so in total four of them. Uh, mm -hmm. I have different subnets, uh, so uh, in total we would have four in our cluster, so two per mm -hmm. site. And mm -hmm. we, when we want to use those networks, we have to uh, specify routing here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we need we, we can't use um, a layer a layer two stretched VLAN for the replication network. Uh, you will go back to the documentation from Microsoft and Microsoft said yeah. if something leaves a site, we have to use routing. So layer mm -hmm. three. So these networks have to be routed, and we need a very fast gateway because over this network, 
every mm -hmm. write that is done to a local local volume is also replicated uh, to the other side and if we if we use synchronous replication we have to wait until it's mm -hmm. replicated to the other side and written there and the acknowledgement comes back yeah. so if you would use a one gigabit network imagine you have nvmes and then use a one gigabit network for the replication that would be very very slow yeah? mm -hmm. unfortunately okay. Microsoft doesn't support RDMA on these network cards. The traffic is SMB3, so it would be natural to use RDMA here, um, but it's not supported if you if you leave um, a rack aside. And um, ideally, that's one of my findings, and also I had some calls with support. Ideally, no other traffic is using these networks. And we come to that a little bit later. Yeah. Okay, Bernard. I think okay. now it's your turn, right? Yes. Um, no. If you could, you know, switch to my screen. Um, I switch to your screen, of course. Yes. So, all of what Carsten just said is, you know, part of the same website which I was driving you f before, right? Uh, which is still on the. There is a section, right? at the lower third of this article and it's a very lengthy one um, but it talks about the stretch cluster setup and what the requirements are right so um, I mean it is there um, it tries to put in some graphics uh, to explain the things you know put out the requirements for example the host communication must cross a layer 3 boundary which means routed right um, that's also uh, applicable for the replication traffic, which also needs to be routed, uh, like Carsten said. What I like is also this graph here, because that's you know sort of an um, explaining how a base setup will look like, right? Um, and it gives you an idea on you know sort of how to put the cables at least a little bit, right? Um, and also talks a little bit about the networking uh, underneath. However, uh, would that be enough, in my opinion, to actually build a stretch cluster? Uh, well, it might, but um, I, you know, I would love to have a little bit more context and a bit, little bit more information, and that's part of this video series, right? And Carson, um, I think you're, we, um, we are taking it from there, right? And um, so what's what's and, missing here, for example, mm. Bernard, you can you can do the presentation. Uh, mm. We we didn't have any management network management uh, right. constraint, and also right. our VMs were not were, are not present. So it's uh, yeah a part of the true story, right? And now, yeah. Bernard, show us the true story so far. So you have your imagine you know, you have the cluster nodes, and this is you know the names of our nodes in our setup. So um, we have two sites, an odd site and an even site, right? So you could say it for, uh, see it from the numbers, from, from the numbering of the hosts. And um, okay, Carsten, you said we have a management network and we have two of them because in each site uh, you need to have an own management network. So look at the IP address range, it's different. Look at the VLAN ID, it's different, right? Um, so we have two of them. The other thing is the storage traffic, you talked about it, it's also, you know, um, for redundancy reason, two lanes or two subnets on each side, right? Also same here, different IP addresses, different VLANs, right? So uh, why? Because you don't want to have your cluster think that it is living on a partitioned network. And that's why we use a different, different IP address range, right? Um, the other thing is, okay, we do have, and that's what we see most often, right? So the people are not using different IP addresses. I think for most of the, uh, for the virtual machines, most of them, you know, a sort of a stretched VLAN, as I would say, at least not for the other stuff, but for the compute, uh, for the compute adapters um, or for the, uh, for the virtual machines traffic, right? Um, and then finally, we do have the replication uh, traffic, um, and also this is on both on both sides, right? Um, so also here, different IP addresses, different subnets, different VLAN IDs, right? Um, 
Additionally, we do need to think about the routing between, and that's the next slide, which is you know animating where to route the traffic. So in order to talk uh, to have a successful cluster that is able to talk to each other, to see the other's nodes, to do the heart beating, right? You need to route the management traffic. Okay, I think that's pretty obvious, right? Also, same here is um, in order to transfer data from the odd side to the even side, right, to replicate our storage traffic, uh, this also needs to be routed. This is a high-speed network, right, high-speed gateways, because we don't want to have high latencies on this one, right, so that's the reason, um, or that's something that I would like to point out here. Okay, but um, so far, and that's, you know, sort of consistent with the Microsoft documentation uh, that I was showing, but there is another thing which is um, which we found out which is very helpful for adding to the cluster to a stretch cluster and that's I think Karsten your point where you're taking over yes I will take over and there is one more thing uh, because the network design so far uh, is great uh, but uh, let me show the picture again um, we have our management network that is going over here. We have our heartbeat that is going over here, but the requirements, so I, I had, I implemented some stretch clusters and you have done the same or you helped customers uh, implement them. And um, I had some calls with the Microsoft Azure HCI support and the, the guys are great and they gave me also some additional requirements. So they, they said to me, and it's not in the documentation, the replica network should only be used for replication traffic. So no live migration there. So no cluster communication there, no heartbeat there. Mm. That's okay for me, but if I do that, um, we have mm. only our management network, so uh, for the heartbeat, for the cluster communication. And if mm. we look at the live migration, mm. if we do live migration from node one to node three, of course, it will it will use the SMB, uh, the SMB networks and is very fast, right? The same in this side. But mm. if we have to evacuate a site, because let's imagine, um, Workers have to do something on your power line. So you have to shut down the power inside uh, in the odd side. So you mm. want to move your VMs from this side to the other side and also switch the storage replication. So um, without any, any failure of your workload and you can do that, but where should the live migration, live migration go? It's not, it should not be on this networks. These mm -hmm. networks can't be used because they are not connected. So it would be management. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some scenarios that is right in my scenario and in many other customer scenarios, maybe not because this is going over the core in core infrastructure. And sometimes if you do live migration, there's a lot of traffic and you will maybe uh, get some problems with, uh, with other communication in your scenario. Um, same is if you move a VM that has a storage here, you move it over here, no problem, mm -hmm. but then every storage access has to be go has to go back here because the replication is not shifted. And usually you have multiple VMs in the same uh, CSV because you can't mm -hmm. do more than I would say 32 C, uh, uh, 32 stretched volumes in a cluster. So um, you have multiple VMs in your in your volume, and if you move one, okay, the others are still running here, but this has redirected I/O over here, and uh, that's maybe not what you want. So we need um, there are other networks, of course. We need, in my opinion, an additional network where we can do all this stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is here. Yeah, where do we do the inter-site live migration as an example? And for that, we introduce two more networks. And I know this is now uh, even more complex, but <laughs> these networks are routed and we can use them for our live migration between the sites. We can use it, we have another heartbeat network. It's not only going here, it's also going over these networks, at least what we want and we will configure that and the live migration and the cluster communication and the redirected IO. VM is running here, but the storage is still living here. So we have two 
powerful networks uh, in addition to our management where we can put all this traffic. So, mm -hmm. so let's introduce another network called the cluster networks and what is the purpose? Intersite heartbeat and cluster communication, intersite mm -hmm. live migration and intersite redirected IO. And we will see all that traffic later in the video series and maybe if you don't understand it yet or can't really grasp it why should i do that when we demo the stuff you will really see the need for that so we have two subnets with routing between the sites that's important mm -hmm. and because it's it can be a lot of traffic high bandwidth traffic imagine our scenario we have here a four node uh, stretch cluster with NVMEs, all NVMEs. We really want that our uh, replication is also fast because we have these fast devices. We need high bandwidth uh, networks for that. And mm -hmm. we, you can't really do that with a firewall. You can't really route this high bandwidth traffic with a firewall. You, you should, there are some firewalls out there that can do that, but they are very, very, very expensive. So usually we would use a switch or a routing switch as the router for this network and also for the replication network. Mm -hmm. And um, so what you're saying is the inspection is just too slow, right? So yeah, slowing down. Mm -hmm. Firewall is most of the time also software and mm -hmm. it's too yeah. slow, yeah. And because of the, uh, you saw it uh, in the documentation Bernard showed you, the first line is RDMA is not uh, supported if you leave the rack or the site. So we, these networks also can't use RDMA, unfortunately. So let's, this is yours, Bernard. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh... <laughs> You know, it, it's just a summary of what we what, what we've been talking about. I won't go into the um, individual IP addresses um, or notifications, but you know, you see that's quite a you know a number of uh, one stretch cluster, and you have forty networks to to care about, right? Um, yeah, and that's you know the complexity, or that's describing the complexity of uh, of a stretch cluster. It's you know the networking that you need to take care about, and we need and, to uh, get it no on fun. the yeah yeah it's and no we fun need... to go to the network guys and ask for <laughs> 14 subnets <laughs> with yeah. routing so prepare that in advance <laughs> yeah and also the vlans right so you see we, we are using different vlans and we need to yeah we took that on um, net numbers for our test lab right so we need to get this onto our physical hardware now um so let's maybe have a short look at our test lab yeah so the test lab, you, if you watched our Azure Stack HCI installation series or our Azure Virtual Desktop uh, on Azure Stack HCI series, uh, you know these nodes already. This is our test cluster. There are four nodes. Um, they are all NVMe. Uh, this uh, is where they where they are. It's uh, it's a bit anonymized, right? That nobody steals this fantastic hardware. No, uh, <laughs> we don't want to use other software. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have really two sites. So we mm. do everything that is uh, is um, like in a real stretch cluster. We have switches, we are, we are doing routing and everything, but uh, they are together. Yeah? Doesn't they are in matter. One right. yes. yeah? They're in one rack, but it doesn't matter. It's like we really implement all requirements of a stretch cluster. So imagine the distance between the node is not 50 meters. It's very, very, very low. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have two servers in each side and we have dedicated storage and replication switches. Yeah? So it's really a setup you would do also at least on a campus cluster. And again, here's a link to our Azure Stack HCI installation series, but you will see that uh, more often. So this is the hardware we have. This is one of those nodes. And uh, mm -hmm. we have our BMC adapter that's used to mm -hmm. access the nodes when we don't have uh, RDP enabled uh, um, and so on. Uh, not important for us. Then we have two 100 gigabit Mellanox cards that support RDMA. Um, we have two one gigabit Intel uh, i350 uh, cards. We will use that in our scenario. And we have additional two 25 gigabit RDMA enabled um, uh, network cards for Mellanox. And um, 
what we mm -hmm. talked so far about the networks, that's the logical networks we have to present on the hardware. And mm -hmm. we will do that in the uh, in the following videos. So I think yes. so far, this is the that's end. That's it for now. So um, thanks for staying with us um, because it's, I think, an important lesson. But now I think we are getting our hands a little bit dirty and trying to map these networks, the logical networks, really on the physical ones. So see you there. Bye.